Well, welcome to class three of our four part series on Python and regular expressions. This is an exciting class. We'll get into things like grouping, subgrouping, named groups, and working with files instead of just strings at this point. Let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about grouping. Regular expressions are often used to dissect strings by writing a regular expression divided into several subgroups which match different components of interest. Groups are marked by parentheses. So the meta character here we're talking about are parentheses. And parentheses have much the same meaning as they do in mathematical expressions. They group together the expressions contained inside them. And you can repeat the contents of a group with a repeating qualifier such as the star, the plus sign, the question mark, or even curly brackets. So for example, when we put CA inside a group with a star immediately to its right, this will match zero or more repetitions of CA. So look at the code here. We have that exact thing. Notice it matches zero to nine and stops before index 10. We'll remind you that Python uses zero based indexing here as well. Then we see we want to match on CA, CA, C. Notice here it matches only CA, CA, not the last C because that breaks the pattern of CA star. In the third group, it stops before the D as D is not in our pattern. And in the last group, here instead of the span method, we call group. So it brings back the match instead of the indexing. Now we get into subgrouping. Subgroups are numbered from left to right from one upward. Groups can be nested. To determine the number, just count the opening parentheses going from left to right. So we look here at the code. We see that the pattern is cats. C-A-T is in one group, and then within that group, we have a subgroup around A, the character A. So if we want to match cats, if we want to search rather on cats, we can do so using the group method against our variable m. So m.group, which is the default, that brings us back everything within our quotes. Then we go to group one. Our first group is cat, so that brings us back cat. And then our second group, which is within that first group, is the a. When using find iter, the find iter method, which we haven't spoken about yet. Python still just wants to find cats and does. This is again the default. It's as if we said here match.group0. So what we're actually returning in the print statement is span, right? The span. So where does it start? Where does the group start? Where does it end? And the actual content that we're bringing back against the match. So you see here, and I love cats, many, many, many cats, not rats, but cats. We are going to catch every single time that the word cats appears. This is what's different about find iter and find all when we throw it in a for loop as opposed to match and search, which we've covered in the previous classes. These are going to find all the instances. And to be very frank, I use find all 99% of the time. Okay, so let's test out some use cases to see how much we know about using groups. Our objective here is we only want each word that is followed by a comma and one space on the following string. And we want to return just that word, not the space, not the comma, just the word. So for this, we're going to use groups and we're going to use the find iter method. So let's take a look. We see here in our first snippet of code that we have a comma followed by a space, backslash s, and then one group that is a backslash w plus. So the backslash small w captures alphanumeric, the plus, one or more. So we create variable f. We let that equal our pattern, dot, the find iter method, passing it the string, hello, how are you? We fire up a for loop for match in F, print, we use Python string formatting, 
and we come up with position 5, position 10, position 15, that's the start of each match, and we collect as we would expect, how are you? Because it matches the pattern. It's a comma first, then a space, and then one or more alphanumeric characters. But hmm, we're missing the first word of the string, right? Because that doesn't follow the same pattern. There is no space to grab onto there. There is no comma to grab onto there. So how can we correct this? Well, there are several ways that we can do this. To use groups, we can do the following. We could create another group around a backslash W plus, make that our first group, or make that actually our second group, and then continue with what we had before, comma, backslash, S, and then backslash W plus in a group. So look what we have here. Look at these red numbers that we have. So zero is the outside. If we were to do zero, we would collect the whole thing. One is our outer group, right? That's our first group. Remember, we have to cram to count the opening parens to see how many groups we have. So that would be one. Two would be the first sub, the one that we hope we're going to catch hello on. And then three now would be that second subgroup within our parent group. So now we do everything the same except that we want to call out the right groups. We don't want one because we don't want the whole thing. But we do want two because we want hello. And we want three because we want to catch, just like we did above, every alphanumeric grouping of letters or characters that follows both a comma and a space. So we put those two together. And indeed, we will get now, hello, how are you doing right now? We'll get the whole thing. But we won't get the space. We won't get the commas. We will just extract the pieces that we're interested in, which are actually the words, every single word in this string. Let's try another challenge using the very useful groups that we've learned about. The objective here is to extract the product IDs in the string below, starting with the very first number, 1, 2, 3, and then only those numbers after the semicolon and one or more spaces. So let's take a look at the code. Okay, these are just a few lines of code, but they do quite a lot. So of course, we're using this in a script this time, right? So it's not at Python Interactive. So we import arias. We always have to, regardless of what method we're using. Then we take a look at our string. So the string represents a product ID followed by a product. In this case, Windows Server 2016, Release 2. These are all made up. Then we have a semicolon, and then we have another product ID and a product. And the pattern goes on and on and on. So again, the idea here is, we only are interested in a list of the product IDs, just those numbers and only those numbers that follow the semicolon in the space, except for the start of this, which is its own pattern, right? It's just three numbers. It doesn't follow, much like in the previous example that we had using groups, it doesn't follow this same pattern for everything else. So let's dive in deep to our regular expression here. So we see, we call it p3, our variable, and then we have re.compile, and we have this really funky looking regular expression after our raw character. And in our quotes, we have our first group, right? So we have our group with the caret slash d plus. So this first group says grab one or more numbers at the beginning of the string. This returns the 1, 2, and 3. This is used only one time for us here in this pattern. Then we see number 2 here. This is a character set. I don't wish to return it, but I need to account for it. It's the one or more characters and spaces between the product IDs and the next semicolon. Okay, so we have that there in a character set. Then we have a group and a subgroup. So number three, this is our second group. It includes the semicolon, the space, and, and the very product ID I want to extract. Note, I don't want to return this whole group, just the subgroup within this group presented by, uh, represented rather by number four. This is my third group, number four. This is the one I will use to get the actual product IDs after the semicolon and the space. This is a subgroup to my second group. I don't want to match the whole group, but I need it written in this way to make the whole thing work. 
So you see the output that we will get when we run this is the 123, right? The first number, 123 at the beginning, and then every single number that follows the space that follows the semicolon. So we bring back up the code again and we notice that we're using the find all method here to make this work, right? F3 is a variable that I feed in my pattern P3 dot find all string one. And I'm using the find all or find it or I could use as well because I want to catch every single instance that matches my pattern. Notice then that I'm bringing back the desired groups that I want because I don't want them all in my actual print statement which lives in my for loop and you might notice something very strange instead of using search and match right those methods with with find all it happens a little bit differently with search and match we do that variable dot group and then in parens we feed that method the actual name of the the actual number of the group here you see that we have match and then square brackets. Find all works a little bit differently. So now we go back to zero base indexing. Yes, it's group number one, technically, but it is object zero in Python zero base indexing. So we want to use that first group, which is zero. And then we want to use that third group, which turns out to be two, right? Zero. The second group would be one, which is the the outer group here and then the subgroup in that outer group turns out to be group number three if we count the parens which is in zero base indexing turns out to be a two so be very mindful of that as you go our objective here is to take a look at how we would do the very same thing we just did except reading from a file instead of a string. We just wanted to expose you to a different way of doing things here. It's likely that most of us will have call to use bigger data sets and bigger data sets don't lend themselves well to strings. So now we're in files, we're in databases, etc. So same thing, we want to read a text file of products and product IDs, extract only the product IDs and print them out to the console. So you see here in the snippet of code, with open data.txt, which is the name of that text file that you see as in underscore file. And then we simply have the for loop. We have a variable that represents the text we want to search using the find all method. Then within there, we have another sub for loop for match in F3 should look very much the same to you. We're picking up those same two groups of interest to us. The first one, which is called zero here, of course, and the second one that we're interested in would be the third group, which is called two here. Again, that's due to the zero based indexing and how we have to compensate for this when we use find all as opposed to match and search. If you're at all confused, just go back to the last slide and it will explain it. We took a tour of groups. Now we're going to talk about named groups. A Python regex named group matches the regular expression in the parentheses to the right of the group name and is referenced by the name in the angular brackets. Its syntax looks like this. We have the parentheses, we have a question mark, and then we have P and angular brackets around whatever user-defined name you want to use. The ellipsis represents the regular expression that you will pass in, again, user-defined. In the example below, the group name is first word. We would use this name to reference it in our code. The regular expression is a backslash B, this is the boundary. The empty string at the beginning or end of the word is what that looks for. And then we have our backslash W plus, one or more alphanumeric characters, followed by another backslash B, the boundary at the end of the word, that looks for the empty string. So if the string we were searching on was hello earthlings, this would return the word hello. Let's expand upon this named group concept a little bit more. We'll get a, a little bit more complex here, but this should drive home what we just saw in no uncertain terms. Okay, so number one, we're searching on a string that says hello people 2018. Number two, our first group is called first word and is identical to what we saw on the previous page. 
slash b equals the empty string at the beginning or end of the word slash w plus equals one or more alphanumeric characters followed by a slash b, which again equals the empty string at the beginning or the end of the word. So that will bring us back the word hello in our string, that very first piece. First word brings us back hello. So let's go to number four. Number four, we have the backslash s, not in a group, right? It just hangs out there by itself. Number five, we capture our second word, which is identical to the first word. So number five is going to bring us back people. Then we have the backslash s again. And finally, we have our third named group, which is called the year. And this time it's different. It's backslash D plus. So this will bring us back one or more numbers in a row. And that's going to bring us back our 2018. So you see in our print statement, we have print matches dot group first word. We use search here, by the way, instead of find all or find iter. First word, our second print statement is the second word. Our third print statement is the year. So all we're doing here is referencing the name of the group. Instead of by position, we're referencing the name. That's the difference between regular groups and named groups. Okay, great. You did it. You got through the very tricky third class of this four class series. We have one more to go. Stick with us. In class four, we get to even more complex examples. We talk about splitting and substituting and search and replace. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll see you in the next one.